The Empire was ruthless and would maintain an iron grip on its territories through fear, intimidation and brute force. However, we do know that there are many worlds and systems that did attempt to secede from Imperial control during its reign. But how did the Empire respond in these scenarios? Now, firstly, we need to understand why the Empire needed to maintain control. Now, there are of course obvious reasons. Being things that if worlds leave the Empire, then the Empire will be deprived of land and many of the resources they needed. For example, they can't tax them anymore. Despite this, there is another reason. There's a lot of relatively worthless worlds out there that the Empire didn't really need to control. Worlds with limited resources that had no real strategic value. However, it all comes down to setting a precedent. If worlds are allowed to exist outside the Empire, then they become of an example of what others could become. In order for a tyrannical police state such as the Empire to exist, it has to be the only option. So even if some dustball world in the Outer Rim is outside of the Empire and it has no value to the Empire, so in this example the Empire just left it, and they did okay for themselves, then it would prove to the rest of the galaxy that you can be independent, that you can succeed, and this is a dangerous idea for the Empire because it would lead to the more important, strategically valuable worlds to also consider seceding. So let's say, for example, you live on a bang on middle of the road world. You're in the Outer Rim, you have a pretty small population, you have ample resources, factories, mines and food, but nothing to the scale of, for the example, Mon Cala shipyards or anything unreasonably big. On a galactic scale, you're small tomatoes. And your world's government, along with majority of its citizens, begin to develop an anti-imperial sentiment like many worlds did. In response, the government begins to become difficult with the Empire, being unaccommodating, halting taxes and tithes to the Empire, and eventually they will decide to secede. They demand freedom from the Empire. So what happens? Well, in these early stages, generally speaking, the Empire will send a Star Destroyer or two, along with an Imperial politician, to request that they reconsider. Now, this is an ultimatum. The Empire doesn't really want to waste manpower and resources beating up a world that they don't really value that much. And they don't want to cause problems in their own backyard. So generally, this is intimidation, and most of the time, this will work okay. However, if this doesn't work, then things start to get very, very bad for the world in question. If, like in many examples, the Empire's wishes are refused, then they will choose to exercise its military it will likely launch a few concentrated attacks on the worlds, blockading ships, sending troops down to capture key locations such as factories, ports, and anything else of value. Also, chiefly, they will move to arrest anyone who is behind the movement. This is generally enough to get what they want. As we've said, the Empire has a lot of manpower, and it would take a very competent military to actually hold them off. However, for the fun of this video, let's say that they do. We know that, for example, Mon Cala did actually manage to beat the Imperials back on the first few assaults. So for this example, we're going to say that this secession movement has been planned for a long time. The world has its own military, backed by mercenaries. As well as this, it has orbital defences, perhaps even an ion cannon. For this reason, the Empire can be repelled. It cannot establish a foothold on the world. As well as this, the leaders of this secession movement will have to go into hiding, because the Empire will, needless to say, move to have them assassinated as quick as possible, cutting the head off the snake, if you will. So, what now? Well, you've done the worst possible thing. And that's making the Empire look incompetent. And you are going to have to pay for it. The Empire will likely begin to use its ISB and other secret service groups to undermine that world's government and anyone in the secession movements. Finding informants, begin Imperial loyalist militias and assassinate and destroy certain targets. This is all to weaken the world to prepare for what is to come. And once it is sufficiently weakened, then the Empire will come down on it like a ton of bricks. The Empire believes when it wages war, it does so totally. It will begin with air assaults before landing in major cities. The Empire will inevitably take the major cities, forcing the secessionists into uncharted territories. It's almost impossible to keep the Empire at bay for so long. They will just throw troops at a problem until it is done. And even if they do succeed in successfully weakening the world, it doesn't matter how many Imperial lives the Empire has to sacrifice. That is redundant. If they are actually losing more men and more resources than what the world is worth, it doesn't matter to them. 
they have to bring this planet back into the fold and make those people who betrayed them pay. Now that the secessionists have been pushed out of all of the key areas, the Empire controls all of the important assets, such as ports, infrastructure, and most importantly, people. The citizenry will be used as very, very valued negotiating tools. Most resistance groups would not risk a full frontal assault on their own cities with their own people in the firing line. This is the point where the Empire has now become the occupying force. The Empire from here is now fighting from a position of power. You have cut these rebels off from most of their resources, and they're now stuck in the wild. The Empire will begin to push them and hunt them down. Meanwhile, they will begin enacting brutal repercussions on the citizenry of the world in their own territory. Random arrests, extortion, the Empire will break the will of the people so that they never get the ideas of rising up again. It'll be over-policed, and it will more than likely ruin a large portion of the citizens' lives. Meanwhile, a puppet government totally loyal to the Empire will be installed, likely with an Imperial bureaucrat at the helm. Now, generally speaking, the rebels will be hunted down and killed. However, a good amount of them will try to escape before the Empire closes in for the final kill. And this is one of the biggest problems that the Empire faces, because this then leads to the founding of larger galactic scale rebel groups. A huge portion of the rebels in the Rebel Alliance started off by just fighting for their homes. However, once they realised that this was fruitless, they escaped and they joined up with larger groups such as the Rebel Alliance. And this is a big problem for the Empire. At the end of the day, they can control all of the territory they want. They somewhat believe that controlling territory amounts to controlling the people. However, this just isn't the case. Those rebels that fall through the cracks and manage to escape will one day come back to hurt them. Now, ultimately, this, in my mind, is the most likely outcome for any world that resists Imperial takeovers. However, in other cases, it could result in just total orbital bombardment. A blank slate policy, if you will. If things really are that bad, then the Empire will cut its losses. It will bombard the planet to pieces. Uh, take Jeddah, for example. It literally ripped that world in half. Why? Because they needed to prove a point. But what do you guys think? Is this how the Empire would respond? And do you think that it's a good or a bad stratagem for the Imperials to enforce on worlds that show resistance to them? And how do you think you should deal with it? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, please remember to like, share and sub, as it is really appreciated and it helps the channel grow. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at the Law Guy and tick the bell to get regular updates. But most importantly, thank you so much for watching this video, I really do hope that you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.